Hey everyone, this is Doug Zyder Rose for Game Shampoo. As you can see, for the first time in quite a while, I've uh, recorded the gameplay footage in advance. That's because with E3 happening, there's a lot for me to talk about. I'm still gonna talk about the game a little. Kind of like I did the dumb thing there. Really dumb. Twice. But hey, that's how it is. Well, I'm human. I'll try things. So, E3. Mostly wanted to talk about Nintendo, because let's be honest. I'm playing a Nintendo game here, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, specifically DX. You can tell because of all the pretty colors. And that is one of the games which has been recently announced and, well, we got more gameplay footage. So, uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is coming to the Switch. It's actually looking really nice. They've done a good job of keeping a fair bit of the art style. I'll just bring it forward to the more modern portable generation. That's so strange to say about a home console that I can take where I want, which is really cool. Let's see here. There, oh, yes, the next important note would be the Smash reveals. We got two of them. Pretty much uh, helped the bookend the thing. Uh, I have to say pretty much because of uh, not the thing I'll get to shortly. Hey, the presentation almost... No, it did start with the reveal of the hero from the uh, Dragon Warrior Dragon Quest series. All depends on where you're from. They're the same games. And it looks like there are going to be multiple iterations. Probably like uh, Korn, where you can cycle through them. They might make some minor fighting style differences, but nothing too major. They, I doubt we're going to get a lot of fighters out of that. And there was also the reveal toward the end of Banjo-Kazooie actually joining the fight. <laughs> With uh, appropriately saying he's raring to go. Oh, it's really awesome, actually, to see Banjo-Kazooie come in there. There, I mean, you know, they're fun games, and it's just great to see, you know, a character like that from somewhere else being brought into Smash. It, I mean, we've got a fair bit of it now, but it's still not the most common thing. Hey, now... Now, I suppose I should address the elephant in the room since I'm talking in Nintendo E3. That little tease we got for the Breath of the Wild sequel. Breath of the Wild sequel that I am looking forward to. I put a lot of time and effort into covering the name Breath of the Wild for orcs. So much work, but so worth it, and it was wonderful to play that, and, and to actually get a sequel, like, and incidentally, Link's Awakening is a sequel to A Link to the Past. It's an obscure little, well, no, it's right in the uh, manual in its description. It's not that obscure of a fact. It really isn't, but it's still a fact. But there is one thing I haven't talked about from that presentation which is very near and dear to my heart and that is the collection of mana as well as the announcement of trials of mana for the switch why i love the second in setsu series which means the fact that collection of mana has final fantasy adventure secret of mana and now the well yeah super famicom version of Trials of Mana, as, or, as I'm so used to calling it, Second Densetsu 3. It's so weird actually having an English name that isn't Legend of the Holy Sword 3. And hey, those, them's translation things. <sighs> so, that is at least the blurb for the Nintendo E3. Next, the big reason why I actually don't have a controller in my hand and why I'm watching myself play a game 
Collect keys and beat a dungeon without dying. Still died once, so I don't get the best ending in this game. Also, you may have noticed I've actually completed this. This was pretty much done in episode two. Now, oh, when I went and loaded the game back up, I wasn't in the same place. I didn't save state. I thought I'd save the game, but I was wrong. It didn't register properly. So, I had to replay it. But yeah. Uh, the actual reason why I've set it up so I can just talk, opposed to play and talk, is a podcast called Ethernautica. Uh, this is a Space 1889 Call of Cthulhu hybrid running on the Cortex system. Ethernautica is an actual play podcast. It's game mastered by, honestly, a friend of mine, Double Deadline. And the players are Kelly, Stylus, and Mike. I know Kelly and Mike. It's been a while since I've seen them both, but they are friends. And Stylus I've talked to through the Discord. He cool. I like him. He also know oh, to promote his stuff as well. He uh, has three podcasts which he helped... No, two of which he runs, one of which he runs the game, but it's like edited by his wife, Novelty. Hey, those podcasts are Dragon Ball Rebellion and Random I'm in, I, Random Item Procurement Inc. and Pirates of Wild Space. So, uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Rebellion is Dragon Ball on top of a Star Wars system. I can't remember which one. I'm bored at that part, but uh, Random Item Procurement is a 5e game. And it does have some custom races, one of which is really, really adorable. All oh, and uh, right, Pirates of Wild Space is a 5e spell jammer. So, hey, spell casting in space for fun and profit. And yeah, that, that sums up Stylus and Novelty Stylus Gaming. Very much track them down, give them a follow. I heartily recommend it. Now, now like I said, Ethernautica, it is a cortex based game, and that means most of the stats. You know, they range from the D2 to the D12. Just running the common type, so you don't need to worry about that D3. I feel a little sad, but D3 is really rare. And it honestly gives them a lot of flexibility, and it's fun. And very, very fun to listen to. The players have a wonderful dynamic between each other. The characters all have motivations. They're all after something. Sometimes just what's going on with me, or I got pulled into this. Wow, one of those was very, very literal. They got yanked in. And you now, kind of give you an idea of what Ethernautica is going to have. Well, it's very steampunk. That's the Space 1889 influence. You've got a lot of mystery, a lot of you don't know what's going on, the players don't know what's going on, because the characters don't know what's going on. It's wonderful to go along with the characters for this adventure, or learn things as they're learning them. Now, now a supplemental show to Ethernautica is Ether Talk. This is actually run by one of the players, Kelly. He, she, through Discord and Twitter, encourages listeners to come on so we can share our thoughts, feelings about the show, make predictions about what's going to happen, what we think is happening with people. Well, now that we're into the second season of Ethernautica, we've all had a chance to really meet these characters, get a chance to know most of them. Daisuke is still very mysterious, but I know that's part of his thing. 
we know parts of what he did and who he was before all this happened, but there's still a lot to learn. There's still a lot to learn about Rose, who is well, kind of the de facto party leader. She's the sensible one. And, well, yeah, yeah, she does the best job of being sensible. And, you now we've just been introduced to a new player character this season, Felix, who seems to have a fear of horses. We don't know anything about that. We're all still learning about it. And uh, he's apparently spent a lot of time in Deadwood, where nudity and other things are just normal. But, why am I talking about all this? Well, because this the episode that comes out today, June 13th, 2019, of Ether Talk, I'm actually on. And I'm sharing my thoughts and feelings, my favorite moments, from the, the recent episode. Moment, I actually forgot to write down that name. So I'm talking about what's happened in Ethernautica. There we go. Available episodes. Ah, The Encroaching Dark. The last episode was episode 12th of season 2, The Encroaching Dark. So I get to talk about this uh, new NPC we've met called Beauregard. Share some theories about that. Uh, just listen to the past two, three episodes if you want to learn about Beauregard. But I sincerely do recommend go back to the episode zeros where we're giving the actual character introductions for Rose, Daisuke, and Ralph Maddock. The you know, uh, Felix didn't get one because reasons. You you want to know? Listen. And because I also need to give credit where credit is due for the production values as well as the time and effort that has gone into Ethernautica. So now Stylus manages like the audio recording setup. And he's got a really good setup now. Still working on improving it. Mad props to you, Stylus. I don't know if you'll ever see, hear this. But, hey, it remains. Mad props to you, man. You've done amazing just making stuff better and better. And, yeah, I'm gonna promote your stuff as much as I can here. Hence, talking about Rip Inc. And Pirates of Wild Space and Dragon Ball of Rebellion. There are methods to my madness. And then we've got uh, the work between Kelly and Double Deadline. And both of them make up the Ethernautica audio editing team. I don't know the specifics about who is doing what within the dynamic beyond they both work on the audio. And I do know that Double Deadline is the one adding, like, music and sound effects. Mad props to you, Deadline, for the work you have done. I know the season has been more challenging for you because, as you've said, it's calmer. Right, which means you actually need to, you know, find stuff for those more chill times. Hey, congrats, you've been doing a wonderful job. There's a... There are many reasons why I said the things I do, and now honestly, I can say this: Ethernautica is so well made. And when there is a little mistake, you have to listen very closely to catch it, and it's really unlikely that it's going to like crop up much to any, because. Yeah, it is a testament to their editing, and it's a testament to the deadline style of running a game. He's very detail-oriented, and has lots of plans. He's good. That's all I really can say. He's good. Uh, Kelly does an amazing job on her part, part of helping with the audio editing, 
making sure things are syncing up. I'm sure along with a lot of other stuff. Like I said, I don't know the specifics. I need to give both of them credit where credit is due. And oh, is it due. And even though, yeah, Mike doesn't help, he's still one of the players. He has fun characters and it's really wonderful just seeing what's going on. Do you want to see a uh, Felix just doing his thing and having a lot of fun and go back to the earlier parts of season two and find the seduction. It is wonderful. You will not regret it. Okay. Wow. I've got a minute left to wrap up thoughts, feelings, and conclude this. So, oh, just beating this uh, boss, boss beaten. And, and all the stuff I've been talking about, Ethernautica, Ethernautica Talk, I'm going to be including links down in the description. And, you know, my Twitter's there if you want to recommend games for me to play. And, oh. <sighs> That's that. Please check out Ethernautica as well as all of the novelty stylus games. It's all a lot of fun. So, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, keep up to date with the Game Shampoo Let's Plays of A Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Full Throttle, and all that Skyrim content that I keep throwing at you, because Skyrim. This has been Doug Side of Rose. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've all enjoyed it. I'll see you later.